tell the authors how to submit and how to format and also what the journal is looking at. They also quite often will provide links within them to useful information for the authors. The BMJ, for example, has a lot of very good resources on ethics, research, author, authorship, plagiarism, all sorts of good, useful information. And you can find those by going through their, their author guidelines. Um, so it's well worth having a look at these and making sure your, your article complies with it. So what happens after you submit an article? To many authors, this is like a black hole in space. You submit your article, you get an email confirmation, and then the world goes completely silent for weeks and weeks and weeks. The key thing is, in a way, no news is good news. Because if you get an email back from the journal within a week, it's likely that that email is saying you're rejected. Because most journals will make an immediate decision on either completely unsuitable or suitable to consider. The immediately unsuitable should be made very quickly. If you wait a bit longer, it means that the journal has sent your article out for peer review. The difficulty with peer review, it takes time. It relies on the good wills of your peers, the other specialists in the area, to read and evaluate your article, and everybody is very busy. Although to review an article should only take two, three, perhaps four hours, in real, in real time it actually takes two, three, four, five or six weeks to do because somebody schedules it in to be done at the very last day that the journal asked them to do it, and then something comes up. So it does take time. As an author, you should expect to be asked for changes. If your article is just accepted, that's great news, but it doesn't happen that often. Normally, some changes will be required. And you should expect criticism. Hopefully, this will be written in a positive um, way rather than negative, but you should expect for your article to receive some negative comments. And you also need to be prepared for rejection. Um, your article may not be suitable for a whole variety of reasons. Sometimes it is nothing to do with your research, it is the way you've written the article. And sometimes it is that your research is not complete enough to, for publication and you need to go back to your research plan and have a look at what you've done and evaluate it again and then reconsider writing it up. But you do need to be prepared for rejection. And you need backup plans. You need to be prepared to take your article to another journal, as well as being prepared to rewrite it. And you need to be prepared to listen to criticism and actively improve your article. Most authors don't like getting rejection, and they don't like getting the comments peer reviewers make when peer reviewers say, this is wrong, you should do this, you should do this. But take 24 hours out, and then look at your article again because most authors that do that say that the criticisms they've received have helped them to improve their article. So the good news is your article is published, it's accepted. That's great, but the game's not over yet. As authors, you have a responsibility and also you have the opportunity to promote yourself and your research further. Publication is not the end, it is only the midpoint. You can promote your own work using blogs, tweets, giving copies of your articles to colleagues. Self-promotion should not be sneered at. It is important because you are helping raise the visibility of the importance of your research. How do you know if people are reading your work? Speaking to people at conferences, checking if people are referencing your article, is looking, for make, looking to make sure that other people are reading it. This is a very interesting um, search I did on nature, and I searched for this article, Scientists Behaving Badly, and I found three copies of it. If you remember, a few minutes ago, I mentioned self-plagiarism, and I thought, great, I have discovered nature has published self-plagiarized articles. 
However, what I found was some very clever promotion of an article. This is the original article um, published in 2005. But because it's quite an interesting title, Scientists Behaving Badly, the journal produced a news report of it, which they've also published, and then the authors produced a digest of the article, all of which was published in um, Nature Journals. But this all served to promote the original article, <coughs> and it was raising awareness within people who may not have read this. I do not subscribe to Nature, so I would not have seen this article. But the Digest, published in Nature Digest and Nature News, I may well have seen, because I look at these. And that would raise my awareness of this article. So using blogs and tweets, you can reach people that would not have thought to look at the journal. You can increase the audience. And that's important to get people reading your content. So finally, publication is something that is important, but authors need to be careful how they write, they need to be careful in the journal they choose to publish their work, and they need to take responsibility for also helping to increase visibility of their articles. Thank you, and good luck. <laughs>